Next on Good Taste. It is really good. Juicy spit roasted chicken and tons of outdoor fun. This new place is a perfect pandemic escape. This is a good way to get out of the house without being in giant masses and crowds of people. Plus, there's something about Texas pride and beef, right? Yes, ma'am. Some sizzling steak tips from a real pro. Then, got a sweet tooth? Find out where sweet peaches and buttery caramel team up for one sensational bread pudding. It is so good. And it's delicious. Everything on the menu is great. This gorgeous shaded patio is calling your name. Good Taste starts right now. Everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. With COVID-19 in the mix, we're all paying a lot more attention to where we eat and what we do. I think we found the perfect spot, a place that mixes fantastic food, loads of fun, and tons and tons of space. If the pandemic has you feeling a little blue, boy, do I have a place for you with a rooftop bar, al fresco dining, and sports galore. It's a social distancing dream come true. Well, the outdoor games, the cornhole, all of these things are kind of things that we designed to help get you out of the house. With good fun and great food, like this burnt end sandwich drenched with sweet heat sauce and topped with tart pickles and tasty onion rings. It all started in Kansas City, where folks went wild over this chicken shack with its hot wings, hand-cut fries, and house-made pickles. The chicken is super tender. She's right. Whether you like it roasted, grilled, or country fried, the yard bird here is out of this world. Mmm, it is really good. But we're not in Kansas anymore. This chicken has flown the coop and landed right here in the Lone Star State. You can't be in Texas and not have some sort of barbecue in your life. With four acres of indoor and outdoor fun, this brand new family friendly San Antonio spot is chicken and pickle. And this is pickleball. So we'll play a point here, okay? Okay. A cross between tennis and ping pong, pickleball is a breeze to pick up even for amateurs like me. Oh, I win! <laughs> it's a great way to work up an appetite. Chicken and Pickle is known for its glorious, golden brown rotisserie chicken. It's actually delicious. I would probably eat all the chicken all the time, every day. Fire roasted over oak and served with a side, like these smoky barbecue beans and burnt ends. If you want to go healthy, go big. Try the Southwest Power Bowl, packed with plant proteins like quinoa, kale, fresh herbs, and awesome avocado. When I walked into Chicken and Pickle for the first time, I thought, wow. And then it hit me, for these times, this is the perfect place. This is a good way to get out of the house without being in giant masses and crowds of people for the most part. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. With good, clean fun for all ages, local bands, local brews, it's dog friendly too. So tell me about pickleball. This is my first time to play. Yep. And oh my gosh, I'm a new convert. It really is fun. And the first time you put, put your hands on a paddle and you play a competitive game, you're addicted. It is great fun. And yeah. I can imagine just for the entire family, I would think during this unusual time we're living in, this is one of the most family-friendly, people-friendly places to be where you don't just have to get food to go. I mean, this is a place you can stay and enjoy. It's all outdoors, or most of it. That is 100% correct. All our tables are six feet uh, apart, and uh, everything is, is very safe here, ma'am. Chef Patricia Seidel, whose impressive resume includes a stint at Biga on the Banks, let me in on a few of Chicken and Pickles cooking tips. Okay, so rotisserie chicken is the sign it's the thing here. Yes. But this is a close second, right? It is. It is our most popular sandwich by far. Pickle lovers, 
This is the sandwich you've been waiting for. All right, Trish, so we're going to make your soon to be world famous chicken and pickle sandwich, right? Pickled chicken sandwich. Pickled yes. chicken sandwich, okay. Yes. It's pickled chicken because we brine it in pickle juice overnight. So it has its own unique flavor. Now, does the pickle juice also add some juiciness and tenderness? It sure does. Served on a buttery brioche bun with bacon, pepper jack, pickled avocado, and pickled cabbage slaw. Boom. Whoa. That's the pickled chicken sandwich. That is one heck of a sandwich. And to top it off, all of our sandwiches get a slice of our house-made pickle. Of course they do, right? Mm. Mm. This is really good. So if the shutdown has you feeling shut in, head on out to Chicken and Pickle. It's a guaranteed good time. <laughs> Calling all fajita fans. Take a look at these delicious chicken fajitas, stir fried with all kinds of healthy goodness. And the best part is they come fully cooked. They do all the work for you. Claire Souls is here to show us exactly how it's done. It's easy, it's quick, it's fast, and it's delicious. Yes. So we're gonna get a little bit of sizzle going here with some olive oil. And then we're gonna add all of this uh, cabbage and corn. Just get that all mixed in, get that toasted and roasted really nice. And then basically the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put these poblanos in to roast with it. These red onions. And you can do any vegetables you like, right? Absolutely. Make it your own. And I personally, I love to put a little whole jalapeno in there and get that nice and roasted for a good little spiciness at the end. Okay, so now we just have to plate it after it's been nice and roasted. That it looks fantastic. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our baked chicken. Which we just heated in the oven. And then we're gonna take our cilantro lime aioli, garnish with a little fresh chopped cilantro, a little lime zest just for some brightness. Oh, nice. And then we're gonna finish with a slice of lime. Yum. And we're done. All right, the social distance is killing me. We gotta taste this, right? <laughs> yes, we absolutely have to taste it. All right. Oh, that is so good. It's zesty, I love it. And that chicken, it's already seasoned. All the work's done. Claire, thank you. We'll have all the details online. This is yummy. Coming up, how to eat healthy in a hurry. The food is out of this world. But first, a boozy strawberry cobbler laced with tequila. That's fantastic. Save room for dessert next. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. The only thing Texans might do better than barbecue is dessert. From perfect pecan pie to delectable bread pudding to good old Texas sheet cake, you can find something around every corner to satisfy just about any craving. This landmark cafe in the heart of historic downtown Hutto is a slice of Americano. Favorite pie would probably be the Oreo cookie pie. Chocolate, chocolate booster. Apple pie, gotta go to classic. <laughs> the pastry case at the Texan Cafe and Pie Shop is always packed with at least 20 different to die for homemade pies. The racks are filled with mounds of chocolate cream, the pretty pink peppermint patty, or this candy bar throwback made with Butterfingers. That tastes go. just like a Butterfinger, oh, yeah. just like yes. it. That pie was really good, but it was the dark chocolate cherry pie that brought my taste buds to attention. Mm. That's good. Oh, whoa. I know. <laughs> the best place for pies. Next, we're heading to Houston for a taste of what just might be the most famous pecan pie in Texas. We're Texas two-stepping our way through Armadillo Palace, a bona fide tribute to the Lone Star State. It's about as Texas as you could get. Part restaurant, part dance hall, Heart legend. I'm telling you, this place is like a Texas museum. <laughs> it is. Everything here has always been really good. That goes for desserts too, like the chocolate soaked Texas sheet cake. That's a really, really good sheet cake. Yes. Strawberry tequila cobbler. It's okay, huh? 
That's fantastic. And Levi's grandmother's famous Brazos bottom pecan pie. That's really good. Your grandma was a good cook. She was. Levi's grandmother came up with the recipe in 1977, and it stuck. It's really a slice, not only of Americana, but it is just puro Texas. It is, it is. Next, we're scooting west to Fredericksburg for an over-the-top, butter-filled, peachy slice of heaven. Cuddled up in a corner of the stunning Texas Hill Country is the enchanting town of Fredericksburg. Home to an underground restaurant named Rathskeller. Because it's actually the only restaurant that I know that's underground. This menu is packed with bites to please every palate. The real showstopper here, the one dish that beats out all the rest, is one you probably won't find anywhere else. It is her peach bread pudding. It is um, a special, special dish. Um, and you've got to try the peach bread pudding. One taste and you'll beg for more. Think of a pot of sweet peaches, loads of butter, heavy cream, homemade whipped cream, and a delicious caramel sauce. How much butter is in this, Chula? A lot. So I think there's probably Everybody. 80 sticks of butter in it or something, but it, it is so good. This dessert is getting our kids through college, let me tell you. It is it. It's that good. We make bets with customers. If you don't like it, we'll pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. If you're a Texan, the sight of a sizzling steak is sensational. I'm at a place right now known for sensational steaks for nearly 70 years. The Barn Door Restaurant in San Antonio, and I'm with the owner, Randy Stokes, and he's agreed to share some of the secrets about steak. I don't know about you, but I literally crave a good steak. Here at the Barn Door, it's really about the beef. We let the beef be the center part of it. We start with simple ingredients, mesquite and charcoal, season it with salt, pepper, finish it with a little bit of garlic, butter, and then serve it to you on your plate. The fire really can be an important component to convey flavor, right? Yes, the mesquite and charcoal really give it a nice crispness when it hits your table. So you get the crisp of the outside of a steak and then the nice tender, juicy part of a nice piece of beef. Get nice coverage on all of them. Don't be scared of over seasoning it because this meat is gonna crisp up on that grill and all the fats are gonna loosen up and some of that seasoning is gonna fall off while you're cooking it over open mesquite. For a little luck. <laughs> there you go. Hey. These are all the choice cuts of beef the barn door is famous for. We don't want to press them down. We want to lay them on the grill and let the grill do the work. Don't get over anxious and keep turning it. 22 ounces of pure beef. Love it. Okay, this looks amazing. There's something about Texas pride and beef, right? Yes, ma'am. Enjoy. Mm, fantastic. So good. Randy, thank you. Coming up, some spectacular new wines in my wine finds. But first, that's fantastic. This feisty fashionista has an amazing patio calling your name. And it is great food, it's really fresh. We'll save you a seat at our table. Good Taste will be right back. We'd love to share Good Taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all of our episodes right here. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. Gather around this garden spot where fresh organic greens are the center of attention. Farm to table isn't just a buzz phrase, it's a fact at Vinaigrette in South Austin. The ingredients are fresh, the, the dishes are unusual and always delicious. Sure, there are sensational soups and sandwiches, but at Vinaigrette, colossal salads are the star with more than 20 beautiful, flavorful combinations to choose from. And it is great food, it's really fresh. 
um, and inviting. And yes, if you have a sweet tooth, delicious desserts abound too. The food is out of this world. So are the cocktails and the mocktails. Mmm, it's good. All served in a vibrant, sunlit dining room, adorned with fresh flowers and highlighted with bright cherry red chairs. Outside is one of the most tranquil patios in Austin. A 500-year-old oak tree serenely shades the enormous space. That's fantastic. All this goodness from feisty owner and chef Erin Wade. She said goodbye to the big city and a career in fashion. She left those bright city lights for a small family farm near Santa Fe. How do you go from Manhattan to the farm? I lived in Boston and New York and then Milan and I, I kind of just felt like getting my hands in the dirt and getting back to kind of a more simple lifestyle. This Harvard grad took over a 10 acre plot and taught herself organic farming, but that was just the beginning had the idea for a restaurant that, that could use some of the bounty that we were creating from the farm at that point. Erin opened her first restaurant in Santa Fe and eventually another here in Austin. She brought her farming know-how to a farm in Bastrop, a spot that will eventually supply year-round bounty to the restaurant. And you decided for your restaurant that you wanted to make the salad yeah, so I love salads, and to me it's about simplicity, and they're just this incredible vessel for flavors. It's light and healthy. You can just innovate them endlessly. I've tried many, many, and I love them all. I've got an Asian with fish. So it's really just an, sort of emblematic of that sweet spot between health and pleasure, and we can just riff off of different flavor pairings, different zippy vinaigrettes. Um, it's just... To me, it's the greatest kind of menu item for that. A great example, Vinaigrette's Harvest Moon. It's got pulled chicken, so you can use the chicken that you've roasted for your family the night before, or rotisserie chicken from the store. With kale, green apples, thinly sliced red onion, and ricotta salata cheese. It's an Italian cheese. It pairs with the apples really nicely because it's got kind of a, a nice little salty bite. This flavorful salad has a soul food vibe that works well with either chicken or leftover turkey. It's got whole, whole grain Dijon, um, extra virgin olive oil, and then lovely sort of chicken gravy in it. This delicious salad is topped off with crispy chicken skin. And that'll give it a little additional crunch and a little bit of that kind of hearty, satisfying flavor as well. Vinaigrette's cocktails have your health in mind too. So we love to kind of riff off some of the botanicals that are in some of the different spirits that we're using um, in the flavors of the mixers and the fresh pressed juices that we're making all in house. This gin and tonic gets a boost from fresh cucumber juice and a shot of chlorophyll. It's good for the blood, it's really good for your colon and digestion. Mm. Um, some people say it's a natural deodorant that <laughs> makes you smell good. I don't know, that's mixed reviews on that one. It's really flavorful and really tasty. It's delicious. Everything on the menu is great. Food and drink so good for you, you'll leave feeling fantastic. Time for my wine finds, and we're celebrating all things Italian this month. For the occasion, I've selected the perfect pizza and pasta wines. Have you ever tried a suave wine? Suaves originate from northern Italy, so you know we're off to a great start. This is the Suavia Suave Classico. It's bright, crisp, and zesty. Similar to a Sauvignon Blanc, but not exactly. Suaves pair perfectly with rich Italian seafood pastas, scallops, even risotto. The Suavia Suave Classico is only $15.98 a bottle. Next, a red wine varietal that pairs perfectly with food, a Barbera. This is the Pico Macario Villa della Rosa Barbera de Asti, with the cute little ladybug on the label. The name's a mouthful, but remember the ladybug. This wine is pretty darn luscious with its hints of violets, loads of blackberries, and bright acidity. It's a perfect pizza or spaghetti and meatballs wine. The price is right, too, at only $10 a bottle. Last but not least, Lambrusco. Lambruscos are back, but they are much better than they were back some years ago. 
This is the Lenny 910 Lambrusco Scuro. This wine starts with a nice burst of berries, but it finishes dry and crisp. Check out the slight effervescence too. It'll pair perfectly with any pasta or pizza you have on the table. The Lenny 910 Lambrusco Scuro is about $17 a bottle. It's delish. As always, I found all my wines right here at HEB. More good taste on the way next. When visiting Houston, the Good Taste team loves to stay at the beautiful Royal Sinesta, right in the heart of Uptown, conveniently located near the Galleria. During these unusual times, we hope you're able to enjoy and support your favorite restaurants. To help you with that, we've got a huge list of them on our website at goodtaste.tv. We'll tell you if they have a patio, if they do takeout, if they're doing dining in, it's all online. And we'd love you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Good Taste TV. And don't forget, for all of the recipes you see in each and every show, they're on our website as well, goodtaste.tv. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We'll see you right back here next week. Cheers to Good Taste. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about chicken and pickle. So how long have you been with chicken? Chick I, I, I'll do that a million times. Yes. I've been saying it all week, chickle that and pickle. That makes me feel less nervous, so keep doing it. So there you go. <laughs> so how long? Tell me about chickle and pickle.